Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Sky Knight. Uh, tonight, I would like to walk you through how I go about setting up a Qubit Torrent on my headless server, specifically the NoX version of Qubit Torrent. Uh, Qubit Torrent is by far my favorite BitTorrent client, uh, if not just for how ridiculously lightweight it is, but for how ridiculously simple it is to get a, a web interface up and running with a little to really no effort. Uh, let's get into it. And before we get too far, uh, the drink of the night is a nice Powers Irish whiskey. Uh, it's actually the first time that I've, or this is my first bottle of Powers that I've ever actually bought. In. Um, I don't know. It's, uh, I used to be a huge Jameson fan. Like, that's all I, all I used to drink was Jameson. Uh, then graduated over to bourbons and then eventually some scotches. Um, I don't know. It's, it's all right. All right. And here we are on just a brand new uh, bare bones Debian server. Uh, this has nothing on it, just the standard system utilities. Uh, so really to get this up and running, we're, well, really, we only need one package, uh, but we're going to install two just because it'll be slightly easier with a text editor instead of having to echo out uh, to create uh, files and whatnot. Uh, so let's, let's install those. First thing we're going to do is install Vim, which really any text editor will work. I prefer Vim. You can use Yan Nano, uh, Emacs, whatever, whatever you prefer. I'm going to go with Vim. Pseudo apt install Vim. And we're also going to be installing the Qubit Torrent client, uh, as stated earlier, uh, the NoX version of the client. And that can be found with just uh, Qubit Torrent dash NoX. Or kind of looks like Qubit Torrent Nox, which sounds kind of cool. All right, and we'll just install both of those. And actually, we could run Qubit Torrent right now and have it up and running. Uh, you'll see at the bottom here, uh, we have our uh, local host exposed at port uh, 8080. And you'll see we can find our username is admin and the default password is admin. Admin. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Should be right here. And you'll see here's the Qubit Torrent uh, web UI. So admin, admin, admin. And you're able to add magnet links, add torrent files themselves, uh, change a bunch of different options here. Uh, once we actually get this set up and running with the correct user and the correct on the correct port, uh, we'll, we'll all go in and show you what exactly I do for that. Uh, but let's hop back into our server here and just close that down. So it'd be great if we didn't have to, you know, manually start the service every time or start the application every time. So let's create a service that will just start it up on boot. Uh, so to do that, sudo vim and then in our etc, our systemd directory, the system folder, and let's call this qubit torrent nox.service. And for this, we're just going to be making a run-of-the-mill stock service for the most part. Uh, we're going to be assigning a specific user and a specific account for this. Uh, we'll be creating that shortly here. Uh, but here we go. I'll walk you through setting up the service now. All right, and the first part of the service is a uh, bracket or a, I guess an attribute called unit. And for this, it's going to have a description And we'll just call this uh, Qubit Torrent uh, no X terminal application. And then we're actually going to want to wait uh, for the network to actually be initialized for this. So we're going to add an after and then do a network net work dot target. Uh, next, we define the service itself. 
So, bracket, service, type. Uh, for this one, we're going to want to do forking. And now we're going to assign a specific user uh, that's going to be running this application, because you don't really want it to be running as the root account. Uh, so let's just name this user uh, qubit torrent no x. And the group will also be qubit torrent no x. And we're going to be creating this user and group shortly here. All right, and then we're going to tell it what to actually uh, run. In this case, we're going to be uh, telling it to run. It's in the USR folder, bin, and then qubit torrent no x. And dash D to have it run in daemon mode. And then we want to tell it to uh, which port specifically we want to use. So web or web UI port. And I'm going to go with 6969 because memes. And restart. Um, let's just have it restart if it fails. Why not? And finally, the last bit is install. And. Wanted by, what is this, uh, multi-user.target. Okay. Write and save that out and make sure that it works. Uh, so first, let's refresh our daemon. So sudo, or I'll bring this up to the top, sudo systemctl daemon reload. All right, uh, next let's just try to uh, see if the service itself runs. So sudo system ctl start qubit torrent no x service pseudo system ctl status qubit torrent oh and i have a feeling that this would have failed because there is no user qubit torrent at the moment yep looks like it doesn't Specifically say why it failed here. Uh, we could check the journal CTL file, but all right. So first, let's add the user. So sudo user add, and it's going to be a system account. No one's going to be able to log into this. It's not going to have a password or anything like that. Uh, it's also going to have the same group. Uh, qubit torrent no x. Oh, add user, not user add. Okay, and then we're going to want to essentially assign our username to that group as well. So sudo user add uh, sky knight to qubit torrent no x. Oh, did I do that incorrectly? Oh, did I spell that wrong? Qubit torrent dash no x. Oh, and of course we did this wrong, so add user. They're so similar. Okay. Uh, now let's try to have that start again. So sudo system ctl restart uh, qubit torrent no x service. And let's check the status for that. Interesting. Okay, did I set something up incorrectly with the ah unknown key name type section service okay interesting let's open that up oh does type have to be capitalized probably does And let's just refresh the uh, daemons here. So pseudo system CTL daemon reload. And let's try to start that again. All right, and now we're up and running. Helps if you capitalize everything correctly. All right, and if we hop back out here, if we refresh, this should not be running anymore, I don't believe. Interesting. I don't entirely understand that. 
Okay, here we go. So admin, admin, admin. Uh, so now that we have it set up on the correct port, it, it should be starting automatically whenever uh, the server will start. And ooh, that's a... It's very blinding, but the dark reader does not work well with this web UI. Uh, so the things that I like to change, uh, first off, you're going to want to change the username and password just because you don't want to use the default for anything. And then if you are, if you have a subnet that you feel is safe, you can just add a, sub, a subnet to the whitelist. So in this case, anything on my internal network. So 192.168.42.0 uh, with a net mask of 24. So anything uh, 192.168.42, anything in that last will be accepted. Uh, with BitTorrents, uh, this is kind of up to personal preference. I know some trackers don't like you to enable DHT or peer exchange or the local peer discovery. So depending on what your uh, tracker of choice recommends, follow that. Uh, torrent queuing. Now uh, you can pretty much go as far as you want or as many as you want. Uh, this is where you would set up your goal limits. I don't really have a need to set up uh, limits. I, I never really soak up that much. My bandwidth, the things that I'm downloading aren't that heavy uh, in particular. Uh, if you're doing a lot of uh, you know, games or movies or something like that, uh, you might want to you know, put an actual limit on there so that it's not, you know, hogging up your entire bandwidth and your wife doesn't get pissed off that she's trying to watch Netflix and you're downloading all this stuff. So do as you will there. Uh, you can choose what port uh, the external, like the, the, the peers that will be connecting to you uh, will be using to get to this computer or to that uh, server. Uh, you can randomize it, uh, have a different port on each startup, which would likely cause issues if you aren't doing port forwarding correctly on your router and it's might be it might be a pain especially if you set up a firewall to only allow connections through this and you set it up as a random one then yeah uh downloads i like to copy uh finish torrents to kind of a download location uh, so, wait, where is this going? Home, Cubit Torrent, Knox, Downloads. So I would essentially have the same location, and then I would just have a, like, finished folder, or a finished directory. So that in case I need to reseed something, or uh, and anything like that, it's easy to find the file that I need to upload, or to reconnect to. And that's, that's pretty much all that I do uh, for my actual setup. I have, uh, I save the torrent file or the finished torrent file itself, the small like 16 kilobyte file. I don't do anything with connections. I don't do anything with speeds. Uh, I deselect uh, all of these. And actually I will require encryption. Uh, for the web UI, make sure that you change the username and the password, especially if this is available on a public or uh, available externally. Uh, there would just not be a great thing to have, uh, you know, the default username and password for a publicly ex accessible uh, service. All right. Well, that is my setup for uh, Qubit Torrent, uh, specifically on my headless servers. Uh, I generally pass in a file system to the uh, server that this is running on. I throw up a, a VPN specifically for this, connect it to a different uh, a NIC, all that good, all that good stuff. I would I would recommend the same. That's kind of beyond the scope of what I'm doing today, anyways. Um, but yeah, I'm Sky Knight. Thank y'all for hanging out with me. Have a good one.